The approach that I would not take to it is to uh, sit back, passively absorb, absorb the grammar <coughs> lectures, think you know everything about grammar, and then try to do it all at once the night before it's due. That probably not. Is that, is that helpful? Cool. Good question. Good question. Good question. Okay. In that case, onward and forward. Intro trucking incident memo report project. Let's do that. Look at exercise number one on page 364. 364. Exercise number one. Imagine, once again, the textbook and by extension me are asking you to imagine a hypothetical real world situation. Imagine that you are the traffic manager of a trucking company. Traffic manager, what does that mean? That means anything that you can reasonably assume it means. Trucking company, what does that mean? I don't know, some company that has trucks. Is it a big company? Is it a small company? It's up to you. Do they do other stuff besides quote unquote trucking? It's up to you. But they are a trucking company of some type. And your company had, has had four highway accidents in a one week period. That's probably not good. It doesn't say exactly <coughs> what the week was. Um, so, I mean, technically, you could say, hey, this report is about four accidents that happened in one week five years ago. That probably wouldn't make much practical sense, though. Uh, maybe it happened last, maybe the accidents happened last week, maybe the week before, probably relatively recent. Because you are going to be writing an incident report. You've just written an informal progress report in the form of an email. This is going to be a formal incident report in the form of a memo. So you might want to go back to the uh, types of reports section in chapter 10 and look back through the incident report advice in particular that you hopefully didn't pay attention to for the last project because you weren't writing an incident report, now you are. So you want to go back and pay attention to that. But they had four accidents within one week. And again, also the directions don't say if that's unusual or not, but practical common sense says it hopefully is unusual. Hopefully you're not part of a company that has four accidents every week, week in, week out. That would be 52 times four. That would be a lot of trucks. So this is probably an unusual occurrence and that's why you're creating a report about it. Using the following facts, write a trouble <coughs> report, which is another, I don't know why they would use a loose term like that. It's another report for incident, re another term for incident report. Write an incident report to your company president, Michael Spangler. Now again, the description doesn't say anything about exactly who Michael Spangler is, but using common sense, we can probably intuit a lot of things about Spangler. First of all, Michael Spangler, president of a trucking company, is he likely to have a PhD? Probably not. Is he, if, if he does have a PhD, is it going to be a PhD in English? Probably not, right? So, uh, president of a trucking company, is he likely busy or not busy? What do you think? If you had to lay odds, busy, not busy? busy. busy. Probably pretty busy. Probably. Probably a good bet. Um, he's president of a trucking company. Is he likely very personally invested in the company or, eh, eh, I don't really care about the company. Which one do you think? Very personally invested or doesn't really care? Very. Probably very personally invested, probably. So you already intuit some things. But how old is Spangler likely to be? Just all 
you know is he's president of a trucking company. 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s. 40s or 50s maybe? Higher, lower? If you had to guess between 40s or 50s, which would you guess? 40s. Hmm? 40s? Okay. So you can intuit busy, probably, 40s, probably. Is this giving you some ideas for layout design? There you go. So all you need to know is what's the guy's name? What does he do? You can already start intuiting some things that will help you with organization, layout, you want it to be easy to skim because the guy's probably really busy. You still want it to contain a lot of details because he's really personally invested in the company. Um, you probably want it to be relatively easy to read and easy on the eyes because the guy's in his 40s and also busy. That helps people skim. So already you're starting to think about practical on the ground stuff. Okay. And much like the last project, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bullet point facts that have to be included in the report. So your mission one, actually mission zero, is write a memo. Mission one is make sure you include all this information. If you don't do that, then you're not doing the mission zero of any real world task, which is following directions. So here are the facts. Your company operates in your state. If you write in your memo, remember that our company operates in our state. That would be really awkward. So much like, again, the last project, you probably want to rework some of this stuff. So um, something like that. I mean, if you literally have to include it in the memo. And obviously, Spangler would know this. It's president of the company. Obviously knows, well, we're a Texas company. We operate in Texas. Probably the reason why the textbook is pushing you to include that fact in the memo report is because, like a lot of incident reports, this could be used in a court of law, or it could be reviewed by regulators. Spangler is the primary audience. He's not the only one who's probably going to read it in the future. And so by saying, just as a reminder, Spangler Trucking operates in Texas, that's speaking to a secondary audience. Obviously, Spangler knows this, but you're including this fact in the report because it might be used in a court of law or something where that fact might be important to make clear. But again, I would not say, dear, uh, well, first of all, you wouldn't say, dear Mr. Spangler, because a memo doesn't have a salutation. But you wouldn't start it off with, as a reminder, our company operates in our state. Don't do that. But include that fact somehow. The four accidents occurred in different parts of the state and on different dates. Again, you probably wouldn't literally say, but what you would do is use that to make sure that the details of the accidents you describe match that. So for example, you wouldn't have one of the, you would describe one of the accidents happening in Louisiana. It's not your state, our state is Texas. Specify the date and location of each. So you want to do that. Each accident damaged not only the truck, so every truck was damaged, and you need to specify the dollar amount. It doesn't say whether you need to specify the exact part of the truck or something like that. You could if you wanted to. You can add stuff if you want to. But you at least need to give a dollar amount for each accident for damage to the truck. And the cargo. So specify the type of cargo. You need to do that. And the dollar amount of the damage. Now, here's the thing about this. Let your imagination run wild, because if you look at the evaluation sheet that I'll use to evaluate your final report, which is already up on the web, as is everything else for this section, um, you'll see that there's nothing in the evaluation sheet that says anything like, is this a realistic description? Is, do you, does it seem like you did research? on? I don't care. I don't know anything about trucking. I assume you don't make it up. If you want to say that, uh, you know, the truck, uh, truck number 47 damaged its who's its Wetzel and it resulted in five billion dollars worth of repairs, sure, whatever. I don't, the only thing I will care about is does it follow the literal directions? Did you specify 
the dollar amount at least of damage to each truck in each accident. Did you specify the type of cargo and the dollar amount of the damage to that? And do your numbers add? <coughs> So if you total the number somewhere, which would probably be a good idea to, do they add up? Because that's an editing thing. But as far as like, is it real? I don't, I don't know. I don't care if it's realistic or not. That's not really the point of the exercise. <laughs> the point of the exercise is just have something right about okay? So please don't go off and do a bunch of research about trucking. Don't do that. It's a writing exercise, not a research exercise. Uh, one of the accidents involved another vehicle. A company truck swerved into a parked car when a tire blew out. Again, vague statement. Did the parked car's tire blow out and the truck swerved into? Technically, you could read it that way, but it wouldn't make logical sense. So again, think about rewording for clarity. The fact needs to be in there. Probably could be more clear, though. Give the make and year of the damaged car and its owner's name. Only one of the accidents injured a company driver. Give the name, company driver. Again, make up the injury. Could be a hangnail. Could be a broken spine. Anything in between, it's up to you. Depends on how dark you want to go. Your maintenance division traced all the four accidents to faulty tires. All the same brand and all purchased at the same time and place. The tires have now been replaced. Again, and we'll get into this in this section of the course when we're talking about style. But from my uh, preview for the last project, the tires have now been replaced. Who did the replacing? Who replaced the tires? The tires have been replaced. Who replaced them? Do we know? The tires have been replaced. We don't know, because it's passive voice. And again, remember as I introduced, when I was reminding folks, do not drop info for your committee progress email report by using passive voice. Don't say letters were sent, when it would be way more clear to say I sent letters. When you think about rewording, Passive voice, not good. It would probably be more clear to say, I replaced all the tires. The maintenance department replaced all the tires. Tom in maintenance replaced all the tires, right? So again, think about being concrete, clear in your statements. And again, we'll talk about this and practice this on the grammar worksheet and through a couple writing exercises in this part of the course. Acme Underwriters. Uh, your insurance company, Acme Underwriters, is suing the tire manufacturer to recover damages, including lost business, while the four trucks were being repaired. So were being repaired, that implies that the trucks are repaired now and back on the road, because that's all past tense and definite, so it's done. Specify the dollar amount of the lost business. And that's it. Those are required facts. So. If you write a memo, if you format it in a recognizably useful, clear memo format that follows the genre, if it's clearly written, if it would be reasonably easy for Spangler to skim and use, if it is correct, if it has correct grammar, again, a clear style, but correct grammar, and it contains all of those facts, you will have an E plus, A minus, 90 paper. So what I'm going to talk about today is introduce you to a technique that can help you to do a little bit more, a little bit more than what you've been explicitly asked to do so that you can be one of those super fantastic, super high functioning A plus people in the world plus. Okay. It's a technique. Conceptually simple, but first time you use any technique, it's strange. So that's why we'll start working through it as a class. I call it do. So you can 
see where this is going, hopefully. Do. No. Did that brainstorming for last project. But this is a more complicated situation. Add an extra column. Feel. 